Well, here's another good question for the yes or no treatment. And it's one that is going to be current in the not too far distant future and perhaps very important in the not too far distant future. And that is, will Prince Charles be a good king? Uh, now, uh, we're gonna make a judgment about this based on people's impressions. Uh, there is, once again, there isn't any real <laughs> checklist for what it takes to be a good king. So it's what you and I think about him as a person, about his behavior, about his attitudes toward things and so forth. So, so I think that's the way we'll, we'll examine these questions. But first of all, a few brief uh, biographical facts. Um, he is Charles Philip Arthur George. Um, he's 72 years old. He's the uh, Duke of Cornwall, the Duke of Rothesey. Of course, he's the Prince of Wales. Um, as of just a few days ago, he's now the Duke of Edinburgh. Uh, Charles uh, is a graduate of the University of Cambridge. Uh, he served in both the Royal Navy and the Royal Air Force. Um, as we all know, he married Diana Spencer and uh, subsequently divorced her. He then married Camilla Parker Bowles, to whom he is still married. And he has been in his role preparing to be king as the Prince of Wales uh, for longer than any other occupant of that job. Uh, the previous uh, uh, longest occupant, the previous record holder was Edward VII, uh, right after Queen Victoria. And uh, Charles has already been the Prince of Wales 10 years or so longer than he was. So Charles has uh, been in the job long enough to, to understand the whole world of Buckingham Palace and the crown and the monarchy and so forth. So that's what we're dealing with. Will he be a good king? Well, there are some strong views about this. Uh, let's take a look, first of all, at those who say, yes, he will be. Uh, to begin with, uh, he has very good environmental credentials. He's always been a uh, a supporter of measures to protect the environment. Uh, he's concerned about climate change. His, uh, his country home is very much a model of good environmental practice. So he's on the right side of today's arguments on that one, certainly. He's uh, very well respected for, for his views in this area. Uh, next, uh, Charles is known to be favoring a slimmed down monarchy. Now, we can't be quite sure what he means by that, but we suspect it will be uh, things like fewer people on the payroll, fewer, fewer people amongst the royals on the civil list. Uh, heaven knows, maybe some of them might have to get a job. Uh, but in any case, uh, I think that probably includes his brother, Prince Andrew, uh, who, with whom uh, there are great difficulties. I think that Charles has been quite disappointed and even appalled at some of Andrew's behavior. So Andrew is certainly not going to figure uh, to be a, a major figure in any slimmed down monarchy. So, that's a, that's a direction that I think the public will approve of. Uh, it's certainly something that makes sense in a time of uh, perhaps austerity coming to, to cope with the, uh, the whole cost of uh, dealing with the coronavirus. Uh, it might be that we need a more modest monarchy and, and uh, that may not be exactly what Charles has in mind, but at least he's saying the right things and heading in the right direction. Uh, next, as I mentioned before, he has been in his job so long that uh, he really knows the ropes. He knows how the system works at the palace. He's got a pretty good insight into how the monarchy operates. So he's been in a very long, uh, on-the-job uh, training program, and, and uh, uh, so none of it will be new to him. That's a plus as well. That will, that will help him to be king. Uh, next, uh, 
Charles famously said a few years ago that he does not want to be defender of the faith, but rather defender of faith. So what he's really saying is he does like the idea of uh, the, the, the spiritual world, uh, but he doesn't want to be uh, specifically sectarian about this and necessarily just uh, concerning himself with the uh, <clears throat> health of the Church of England, but of, but of, all, of all religions. Uh, so in that sense, he's multicultural. He's uh, responding to the Britain of today. And, uh, and, and not that of the old days. Uh, by way of historic background, you may know that uh, it was uh, Pope, uh, one of the Popes, Leo the Tenth, I think it was, or the Eleventh, one of those Pope Leos, who conferred the title Defender of the Faith on Henry the Eighth. Uh, I think principally because Henry the Eighth wrote a tract uh, criticizing Luther. That was before uh, Henry decided he wanted to be a Protestant. <laughs> but in any case, that's where Defender of the Faith started and, it's, and it has continued since then. The monarch has always been head of the Church of England, a somewhat anachronistic uh, kind of situation. But nonetheless, Charles seems to be dealing with that in the right way. And then finally, Charles uh, has been an advocate of a number of charitable interests. Uh, in particular, some years ago, he founded the Prince's Trust, a, a, a very worthy organization that, that helps uh, people who have had a tough time in life and have been in trouble and so forth to start up businesses. Uh, in fact, I myself uh, uh, was a volunteer for the Prince's Trust for some years, and, and uh, I must say it's a fine organization. and, and uh, uh, in that, in that sense, uh, Charles was, uh, was a good citizen in making a contribution to the community, so we've got to give him a lot of credit for that. So there are a lot of things uh, there that, that tend to make us think that uh, uh, he's a good chap, uh, he's got the right kind of uh, attitude, mentality to be a good monarch, and so we're very optimistic about his ability to handle the job well. Ah, uh, but not everyone is. Uh, so let's uh, let's look at some of the negatives. Um, I think to begin with, uh, there is the question of his inclination to speak out. Uh, he has always been un not reluctant to give his opinion on things, to make it known to the government. Uh, something that certainly monarchs are not supposed to do. They're supposed to simply be quiet and not express opinions. Uh, Charles might be inclined to be a different sort of monarch. That could be troublesome. Uh, who knows? In an extreme case, he might even decide to withhold the royal assent on some piece of parliamentary legislation. It, it would be uh, quite a surprise because it hasn't been done since, I think, 1708. <laughs> uh, but uh, as, as an active uh, man with active views about things, uh, that, that, that could pose difficulties for Charles. Uh, next, Charles has had some, let's put it, let's put it this way, non-mainstream ideas about some things. Some would say a little bit nutty, but, but uh, unconventional. Uh, he famously talked to plants. Uh, I must say there are some fairly uh, reasonable people who think that that does some good. He's also an advocate of the very controversial uh, practice of homeopathy and, and uh, pressed the National Health Service to offer uh, financing and, and support for homeopathy, which I think has recently been withdrawn. But in any case, uh, uh, that's the sort of thing that rankles people who uh, like science-based uh, uh, conclusions about uh, medicine and any kind of uh, uh, practice that we all have to take part in. And, and, uh, and uh, so he is uh, perhaps a little bit on the wild side on that one. And for some people, uh, that's offensive. Next, I must say he has exhibited some questionable judgment about uh, some of the people he's dealt with. Jimmy Savile uh, was a friend, good grief. Uh, 
uh, you, you almost couldn't uh, have picked somebody who, who got into more trouble and, and was more reviled uh, than Jimmy Savile. Uh, similarly, he was a good friend of a, uh, a bishop in the uh, Church of England who himself uh, got into difficulty with uh, young boys. Um, even his relationship uh, with uh, Lord Louis Mountbatten, who himself has had a lot of very unpleasant things said about his particular predilections and habits, and Charles is very close to him. So uh, uh, he should exercise great judgment about the kinds of people that he does associate himself with, particularly as monarch. So in that sense, uh, that's a red flag. So uh, Charles will have to keep an eye on that. Uh, next, there is the problem of the history of his relationship with his first wife, Diana. Uh, many people are still angry at him with the way in which he betrayed her and uh, uh, conducted a relationship with uh, his now wife uh, during their marriage, uh, and also the way in which he clearly was offended by her great popularity and very high public profile. I suppose, I suppose it, uh, uh, it was a challenge to his ego and so forth. So his whole handling of uh, Diana and everything surrounded it does not, uh, does not bathe him in glory and therefore there are a lot of people that just simply don't like him for that particular reason. Now that doesn't particularly uh, affect his ability to do the job as king but it, it, is, a, it is a reservoir of uh, of resentment and, and uh, uh, it lingers on. Uh, next, there is a problem, first of all, with the Duchy of Cornwall and with the enormous income that he gets from it and therefore the uh, excessive uh, luxury of a life that, that Charles lives. Uh, he is self-indulgent in the extreme. Uh, it is alleged that he even has servants who put toothpaste on his toothbrush and, and he only wears his underwear once uh, and throws them away and they're, uh, I suppose, uh, used then by his servants. It, it's all a kind of an unpleasant picture of his uh, excesses and uh, his, his life of really rampant luxury, which indirectly we all pay for. That that makes one really quite resentful. And then finally, I suppose the biggest objection is that, that in many respects, Charles is a, a kind of an old-fashioned character. He's almost an Edwardian figure in many respects in the way that he lives and the way he expects uh, people to behave uh, toward himself. Uh, not, to, not to, too much of an exaggeration to say he's kind of yesterday's man. Will, will he be able to uh, cope with the, uh, the world uh, in which he finds himself as monarch? Uh, one is doubtful. Well, there are some fairly uh, strong negative uh, statements and arguments there about Charles. Uh, and, uh, well, I guess now it's time for my take. What, what do I think about? Well, I guess my assessment is uh, brief and I'm afraid somewhat brutal. Um, how Charles behaves as monarch, uh, what he says, what he does, really doesn't have much importance except the way in which it affects the brand, the position of the monarchy. It certainly has no discernible importance or impact on the nation. Uh, but the life of luxury, the uh, unimaginable luxury in which his family lives and of which he is one of the uh, strongest examples, uh, is becoming unpleasantly challenged, it's repugnant. Uh, a lot of people really don't want to uh, countenance this and, and uh, particularly at a time uh, like the one that we're in right now, where the nation is really uh, stuck financially and, and, uh, and is uh, trying to recover the economy. Uh, the uh, 
operations of the Duchy of Cornwall seem to be particularly opaque. There are some uh, suggestions that there, are, that there is some uh, mm, unpleasant tax procedures there and, and, and elsewhere. I guess what the public is pretty much going to demand, especially when he becomes king, is an accounting, an audit, uh, a careful examination of, of where all the money comes from, where it goes to, uh, how much is being squirreled away by the family, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, Charles, uh, as king, and even now, uh, will uh, fight mightily to prevent that kind of examination, and there's just nothing he can do about it. So I, th I think there are some uh, difficult times ahead in, in, in challenging uh, not only the way uh, Charles lives and spends, but in some of his um, attitudes uh, toward the job itself. We shall see. <laughs> well, I'm sure I've offended a lot of people with that one, but uh, anyway, uh, that's how I come out. Uh, and. Please respond accordingly, give me a like or even a dislike, uh, comment, notify, subscribe, etc. And I'll see you at the next one. Oh, and by the way, this is my 100th uh, video for this series, so it's been a signal event. Uh, I've enjoyed uh, doing it a lot, and I'm going to continue at the same pace. So, see you at the next one. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.